Acts, the uh, Chronicles, Second Chronicles, nineteen eleven. And behold, Amaria, the chief priest, is over you in all matters of the Lord. And Zebediah, the son of Ishmael, the ruler of the house of Judah, for all the king's matters. Also the Levites shall be officers before you. Deal courageously. And the Lord shall be, and the Lord shall be with the good. Deal courageously. Psalms 31 and 24. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thine heart. All ye that hope in the Lord. And then I'll go to Acts the 20th chapter starting at verse 11. And after three months we departed in a ship from Alexandria. Which had wintered in the isle whose sign was Castor and Pollux. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. From this, we fetched a compass and came to Redwam. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came next to the day to Petula, where we found certain brethren, and we desired with them, or we, and we were desired with them seven days, and so we went to Rome. And from this, now let's speak about a journey of Paul. Paul had this particular journey that he was going through, and the only things that they encountered was shipwreck. For hence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Apil Forum. And three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. Mm -hmm. Courage. You'll notice a real great word in all of these scriptures I read. Courage. Mm -hmm. Now, deal courageously. The Lord shall be with the good. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thine heart and all that hope in the Lord. And then when Paul saw the brethren, he took courage. All right. Take courage. Take courage. That's what we deal with. Take courage. All right. Take courage. For the word take means to grasp. All right. It means to capture. It means yeah. to win. Yeah. Yes. Courage means to direct yeah. course. All right. If one is courageous, in other words, to direct course means to take control. If one is courageous, yeah. he takes control of the situation. One of the things I learned when I was in Marine Corps was that courage is not that you're never afraid. That's a myth. Sometimes we look at you know Hollywood and Rambo movies and you know, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, they ain't scared of nothing. And in fact, I'll tell you an interesting thing. When I was in the military, I, I never liked to be around guys who said, I ain't scared of nothing. I ain't scared of nothing. See, because I may go to battle with you and you'll get us all killed. Because, you know, sometimes fear will keep you out of certain environments. You know, now it's never a combat vet. Don't, don't uh, misunderstand what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is, by knowing certain ones, I realized if I went in with these guys, acting the way they act, yeah. and they're fearless, they're going to they're subject to run into a sniper's nest. They're subject to run to a landmine field. I'm not going to follow them knowing I get killed. You know what I mean? And most guys, and I've spoken to combat vets, and most of them said the main thing is get here, get done, and go home. You know, right. And they try to avoid all the stuff that would keep them there, you know. So I mean, you know, it, it, it's it's so it's not that you're never afraid, <laughs> but courage is knowing how to keep your head when you are afraid. Courage is keeping your cool when you otherwise would lose it. And so, in order to do that, notice what it says: take courage, take courage. Sometimes you've got to take it. Sometimes you've got to go for it, even though you're uncertain. You've got to grasp it. You've got to win it. You've got to direct your course. And brothers and sisters, I'm convinced in a day and time like this, we've got to be courageous. The Lord is looking for courageous people of God. All right. Not scaredy cats. Not, right. not whips. Not, not cry babies. Right. Not excuses. You know, I preached a message once, maybe I preach it here. Excuses leave us in the same place. Right. And you find that yeah. most of the time that people are full of excuses. They never really right. accomplish anything. That's true. Because when the deal goes down, when you get done explaining why you that didn't do it, explaining right. why you can't yeah. do it, explaining why you won't do it, you, right. you, you, some of your excuses may be good, but when the deal goes down, it's still right where you started. Yeah, that's true. With an excuse, right. you've got no progress. With an excuse, you've got no accomplishment. Right. With an excuse, you've got no victory. You're just right, right. where you started from. Right. Yeah. 
And somewhere along the way, if we're going to start being courageous, we've got to move out of the excuse oh, realm. Yes, right. You know. Yeah. And, and I oftentimes think about, throw this in here, I oftentimes think about the woman that had the issue of blood. The yeah. woman was 12 years, yeah. she was yeah. hemorrhaging. That's right. Now, that yeah. woman would have had a good excuse to stay home because, That's again, right. the right. Bible said that she yeah. got in the press yes. and, 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 and uh, had in her mind, if I can just get to Jesus, yeah. if I can oh, yeah. touch exactly. the hem of his garment, yeah. I'll be made whole. Yeah. But see, her circumstance had pushed her beyond All just right. excuses. All right. Now, she had a good excuse to stay home. Yes, and all the time, I have to throw the scenario in my mind. What if that was your mother? What if that was your mother? Yeah. You know, right. and, 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 and she said, I got to get to Jesus. No, mama, you can't go now. You know, good and well, you're sick. You know, good and well, because yes. see, when you're hearing you like that, you can't stand very long. Yes. When you're hearing you yes. like that, you get lightheaded, you can yes. pass out. Yes. When you're hemorrhaging like that, you can get pain in your okay. lower extremities, yes. in your feet, in your yes. knees, yes. in your hips, in your back. Just a lot of negative things associated yes. with that. Oh, yeah. And you know what? Nobody would have blamed her if she stayed home. Yes. But here was a woman who had gotten tired of her yes. situation. Oh, yes. And sometimes you just got to get tired of where you are. All right. You've been there for a long time. Yes. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. It's like I heard a preacher say on one occasion, you can be sick for so long yeah. until you get sick of being sick. Yeah, right. And it makes you sick all over again. Yeah, all Just right. one long stream of sickness and disappointment yeah, and trouble. Right. And some along the way, you got to get tired of the situation. Oh, yes. And make up in your mind, if I die, I'm going to die trying to get healed. Oh, yeah. And I can imagine that was the, the, the attitude of the woman. Because yeah. understand, yeah. she went out and the Bible says she got in the breath. Yeah. And I can imagine she started getting dizzy. I can imagine she started oh, getting yeah. lightheaded. Yeah. I can imagine her knees began to hurt. She was ready to pass out. Because oh, yeah. the Bible said she touched the border. The hero yeah. is gone. Oh, yeah. Now, she'd been standing up. She could have touched him on the shoulder oh, yeah. or grabbed him by the hand. But ever right. then, she had gotten knocked down, yeah. getting dizzy, weak. But if I die, I will die trying to get healed. Oh, and the yeah. Bible said she touched the hero yeah. of his gun. Oh, yeah. And sometimes that's the attitude you got to take. I'm tired of being in the situation. I'm tired of being in the same spot. I'm tired of the devil slapping me upside the head, going up the front of me and down the back of me. I'm tired of being in the same place. No progress. No testimony. No positive outlook. No victory. I'm tired of being in the same spot. Devil, you're alive. I'm getting up from here. And I'm going to take courage and go forward. Lift the voice and say hallelujah. Thank kind of God, so courage. What is courage? This is I said before. It's, it's not that you're never afraid, yes, but right. you take it in, in spite of it. Yes. Courage is bravery. Yes. And then bravery is not that you're afraid, not afraid, but bravely go forward. Yes. It means daring. Yes. If one is courageous, he yes. is daring. Yes. Take the risk. Take the risk. Sometimes you got to take the risk. And sometimes, you know, you, you, got, to, you got to look at situations. Well, if I tried it and it didn't work, at least I know I tried. I tried. That's right. You know, and I, that's been my way a lot in, in, in my life, you know, because yeah. there are a lot of things. I, and I'll be very honest with you, brothers and sisters. I've got very few regrets in my life. As a man 65 years of age, I just don't have a lot of regrets. Now, I've got some. Yeah. But a lot of things that I thought to do, yeah. I figured I'll never know unless I try it. That's true. And I would do things. I'm not talking about sin and stupid right. stuff. I'm not talking about that. Yeah. But I'm talking about things that I would try. I would, yeah. I, I never know until I try. I never know. Yeah. I just yeah. daydream all day. Okay. And I look back and a lot of things that I did, whether I accomplished it or not, whether yeah. I was victorious or not, I know, well, at least I tried. At least oh, I tried. Yes. But I've never right. had the question in my mind. I wonder what could have happened. Right. I wonder what would have happened. Some yeah. things you just got to step out there. Oh, yeah. You just got to step right. out. You just got right. to show some bravery. Yeah. If it happens, it does. If it don't, God is still God. Oh, yeah. And I'm still going to rejoice in victory. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. But, but, but notice this. Notice this. Take courage. Take it. You got to take it. You got to, you got to as it were, get the bull by the horns. You got to grip it. You got to grab it. Praise the Lord. You got you got to, oh my God, you got to capture it. You got to take course of it. You got to direct it. You got to win it. Praise the Lord. And you know you'll never win unless you get into the game. That's right. Now you know I was athletic when I was young. Not that way now, praise the Lord. Amen. But I used to used to play baseball. I played basketball. You know, y'all told me I told me I couldn't. I didn't anyway. Y'all ain't saying nothing. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I played baseball. I played basketball. I used to be pretty athletic, you know. And uh, uh, there were certain things, you know, that, that, that you know, you, you had to uh, uh, put your mind to. It's a lot of time games were, 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 were mental. Sometimes it was just physical. But having the right mindset, having the right thing. And I look at even now. When I served as, as the Chicago Bulls for 37 years, as you all, all know, right. and I began to learn a different game hanging around the pros. I got yeah, a yeah, different yeah. mindset. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of time, victory is not just uh, what you do on the, on the field, on yeah, the court. Yeah, but a lot right. of time, it's mental. All right. know? And a lot of people I made to, to, to back up in, in a particular game, I, mean, I always remember this game. I always remember this particular game uh, because... The Bulls were playing the Orlando Magic. Now, during that time, that was the era of the, the 90s, yeah, right. when the Bulls had a great team. Yeah, I mean, they won six yeah, championships. Yeah, right. And I will tell you that the mindset of a champion is different yeah. than the mindset of a loser. All right. Because right. in many cases, a loser is selfish and self-defeating. Yeah. All right. He blames everybody else. Yeah. You know, you got people like that. Every, everything's everybody else's fault. They just blame yeah. everybody else. Never yeah. take responsibility for themselves. Yeah. Just blame everybody else. Well, it's his fault. It's her fault. And that's the guys who talk when they were losers because I saw the losing teams and I saw the winning teams. Yeah. Right. And the losers always talk about, well, you know, they need to give me the ball. They uh-huh. give me the ball. I don't uh-huh. need to play it, no. I, 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 I. See, that's the way a loser. Yeah. But right. a winner has a different mindset. Yeah. All right. And, and one of the things I noticed, even in those championship runs, was the Chicago Bulls, or that team, had a mindset or an attitude, we can beat anybody. All right. We're yes. the best. Yes. That's the way they thought. All right. And I remember a particular game, again, yeah, bring this game out, they were playing the Orlando Magic. Yeah. And the Bulls were losing by 16 points at halftime. Right. Now, a good team. Let me show you the difference between a good team and a great team. Well, a bad team would say, well, we lost, forget it. Give me the ball so I can score some points. That's a bad team. A good team might have said, well, maybe we can, maybe we can't. We'll give it our best effort, but if we don't, at least we know we try. That's a good team. That's right. But a great team never looks at an obstacle and says we can't overcome it. That's right. And I noticed when as I watched that particular game, I was sitting up in the press room watching that game, and when halftime, when the third quarter started, the Bulls were losing by 16 points. By the end of the quarter, the Bulls were up by 12 points. Because a great team says it doesn't matter what the obstacle is, right. we can overcome it. Right. See, and that was the difference when David ran toward the light. Everybody else ran from the light. But David ran toward the light. Right. Now, why was David running toward the light? Because even though Saul, yeah. it's like what I talked about the other week, we talked about glorifying the enemy. Even yeah. though Saul glorified the enemy yeah. and tried to discourage David right. and said, David, you can't fight against that giant. He says, yeah. He's a champion. Yeah. Since he was a youth, you're nothing but a youth. Right. And, and you can't go. And, and when, David, when Saul got through glorifying the enemy, yeah. I can imagine David saying, Pardon me, sir. Thank you, King Saul. You live forever, King. But before you go another step, let me testify. All right. And that's why the devil tries to make you forget your testimony. All right. All that's why the devil tries yes. to make you forget your testimony ain't nothing. All right. But David said, let me testify. I yes. came up on a lion. A lion came into my father's flock and tried yes. to destroy it. I destroyed that lion with my hands. And right. Then not too long ago, here comes a bear. He thought he tried the same thing. Yes. And I gripped the bear by his beard and twisted his neck. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. The same God that gave me the yes. lion and the bear is going to give me the head of the lion. Right. Yeah. Why was David able to run toward the lion while everybody else ran from? Because right. David knew the same God that gave him the victory yes. in yes. the past All is right. going to give me the victory in the future. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, certain things build your courage. Oh, yes. Yeah. So, amen. amen. Certain things build your courage. You know, they, they, they build you up because you think if I got victory here, uh-huh. and the devil make you forget it all in one nothing. See, that's what the devil wants to do. Because if you forget what God has already done, right. you're not going to have courage to face the next time. Right. But people held on, man, the same God. Oh, yeah. I know you talk about the enemy. Yeah. I know right. I'm talking about how strong he is, but I've got some victories myself. Yeah. I want some battles myself. Oh, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Amen. I'm not just a good team, I'm a great team. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to overcome because yeah. I believe the Bible greater is he that is in me yeah. than he that is in the world. Oh, yeah. Lift your voice and say hallelujah. hallelujah. And this hallelujah. is why the Bible even says this in the book of St. Matthew, the another chapter and verse 12. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, yeah. but the violent take it. Everybody say take it. Take it. 
ready at the valley to get by for us. In other words, you got to be ready for the battle. You got to be ready for the fight. Hallelujah. I'm afraid what has happened to many people now is because we've been softened up. Because we haven't been given the strength of the word of God. Because we're too busy being told that God wants to make you rich. God wants to make you prosper. God wants to give you something. And a lot of these folk don't have no courage at all. Can't deal with nothing. My God, you've never seen so many folk in the church. Depressed folk. So many discouraged Christians. So many Christians talking about, I don't know how I'm going to make it. So many Christians quitting. So many Christians got more stuff and can't keep nothing together. Got more stuff and can't keep marriage together. Got more stuff and can't keep your family together. Got more stuff and can't even keep yourself together. Even when we testify, we're talking about the devil. The devil did this, the devil did that, the devil told me don't do this, the devil didn't let me get it. I mean, y'all pray because the devil did that. The devil is alive. No, no, take some courage. Take some courage. Devil, you alive. Devil, you alive. You ain't taking this from me. You're not going to take my marriage. No, no, I'm taking it back. And if you be take it by force, devil, you can't have my children. You can't put my children on dope and drugs. And if you do, I'm fighting. I'm ready to fight. I'm ready to do spiritual warfare. I'm ready to do battle. You can't have my children. They belong to God. Hallelujah. And you know, brothers and sisters, some of y'all know, some of y'all know that even our children, they were prophesying what they would be. And look at they went in the opposite direction of where they're supposed to go. No, never you can have. It's been prophesied that my daughter would be a prophet. It's been prophesied that my son would be a preacher. It's been prophesied that this will happen. And never you can have it. You can't kill it. And you know, brothers and sisters, you know what I find out happens? And maybe you experience this. <coughs> maybe you experience this. But you know, sometimes I would find myself, my brother, he was on drugs, and, and, and sometimes in the middle of the night, I would wake up, I would get sleep. See, because, you know, a lot of times we've survived because somebody prayed for us. And I'd be in a dead sleep, and in the middle of the night, just wake up, boom. And I hear the Spirit pray for your brother, pray for him right now. Pray, and my God, just urgency. And I don't know what was happening, I don't know what he was doing, I don't know what was going on, but I'd start praying, and for all I know, the Holy Ghost woke me up. And my Prayer saved his life. Oh, yeah. For all you know, you just never know. Oh, yeah. Somebody say amen. 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 Sometimes you get that urgency. Sometimes yes. you get that urgency in the spirit. It's yes. part of warfare. Yes. It's part of battle. Hallelujah. Yes. And this is why the violent of God to take it by force. Yes. In other words, them, if you're going to get violent, I can get violent too. Yes. If you're going to jump bad, I'm going to jump bad too. Because right. greater is he that is in me yes. than he that is in the world. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. And so we're ready to battle. We're ready to do warfare. Yes. The Bible said this. The Bible said this. That we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against spiritual wickedness in high places, the rulers of darkness, when we deal with demonic forces, with demonic spirits, when I deal with people, but we deal with the spirit in the spirit, and regardless of what you say, there are spirits that are in the world today, there are spirits that we have to deal with today, there are spirits Spirits, my God, that are setting over countries. Y'all remember I talked about when you got spirits set over countries. When the angel of the Lord came to Daniel, and for 21 days he was withheld in the elements by the spirit of Persia. What was Persia? Persia was the country of Iran. In other words, there's a demonic force that's set over that country and still there today. There are demonic forces that set over neighborhoods. There are demonic forces that sometimes sit in your house, and you got to walk through your house. And by the devil and test it out. Devil, you can't live here. Devil, you can't stay here. You can't come and confuse my house. You can't come and destroy my family. Devil, you lie. I'm going to get violent. I'm paying back what belongs to me. Because God gave me this place. God gave me this family. And I'm not going to let you tear it down. I'm taking courage. I'm not going to get nothing done sitting in the corner crying. Ain't nothing going to get done sitting in the corner feeling sorry for myself. Ain't nothing going to get done if I see and cry, Lord, why me? And have a pity party, not son, no man. It's time for the people of God to rise up in strength. It's time to rise up in courage. It's time to rise up and say, if God be for me, we'll be more than the 
going to get you. I'm not going to see you cry. I'm not going to see you feel sorry for myself. I'm going to rise up and take what the enemy has taken. I'm taking back the I'm taking back. And it reminds me, it reminds me of when the Lord spoke to Joshua. You know, they saw the tragedy. Moses had died. Moses was gone. And the Bible said that God spoke to Joshua. They said, my servant Moses is here. And I ain't going to sit you wishing Moses was here. He's gone. And brothers and sisters, sometimes we got to stop the attitude. Like I love the gun. My mother is gone. My daddy is gone. My pastor, you know, ain't no sister crying over it. I mean, crying more, but I got to keep moving. I got to cry the rest of my life. It's time to pick up and keep moving. It's time to pick up and keep moving forward. Joshua, my servant Moses is dead. But the plan didn't stop with Moses. My servant Moses is dead, but the work is still not finished. Moses brought you out. But Joshua, you got to leave the people in. Just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. But he said, I want you to do. Right. Yeah. He said in the one seven, he said, only be not strong and courageous. This is no time for cry babies, but be strong and courageous. Turn not from the law, that the right hand or the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. But I like what he said, be strong and courageous. Apostle Paul said, kind of my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Stop your root crying. Stop your root testimony. Stop your root talking. It's time to be strong in the Lord. In the power of His mind. The same God that brought us to where we are. The same God that brought us through our storms. That brought us through our trials. That brought us through our tears. The same God. Somebody shout the same God. Can you say the same God? The same God that brought me to where I am. He's able to take me over. The work is not finished. We've come this far by the ministry of Moses. But Joshua, be courageous. Take these people over. Take these people in to the promised land. I want you to know something today. We've come this far by the hand of God. Many people have left along the way, but this is no time to give up. It's no time to quit. And I heard somebody say once, that trying time is no time to quit. Yes, we've got trials, and yes, we've got tests, but I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I may be going through the valley, but I'm coming out. I may be going through tests, but I'm coming out. We've been laying do for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Be strong. Take courage. Look at your hand and say, take courage. Take courage. You got to take it. You got to take it. Take it from the devil. Take it from the hands of the youth serpent. Take it from the enemy. Take it. Take it. And stand your ground. Take it. And be blessed. Take your deliverance. Take your victory. We used to sing that song, Brittany Shall We Bind. If I hold my peace. And let the Lord fight my battle. Victory shall be mine. But then we go on and say, after we got the victory. I got the victory. Praise the Lord. Satan is bad. But I'm so glad. As I bring this to a close, Paul gained strength and he gained courage when he saw other brethren. You know, you got to hang around believing folk. Don't hang around negative folk. Don't hang around crazy acting folk. Don't hang around lying folk. Don't hang around around poor testimony folk. But keep with some folk that can tell you what God has already done. The devil will try to keep us away from the church. There's no victory away. Try to keep us out of the thirst for the saints, but there's no victory away from the people of God. We need to come together. The Bible said this that after they were filled with the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost, in the fourth chapter of Acts, they came together again and they're going to talk about what they've gone through. 
Some have been beaten. Some have been jailed. Some have been in prison. Some were killed. But they came together and they got to rehearse what had happened. But then they began to pray. And how do y'all know that strength and praying together? I know we pray individually. And we ought to pray individually. But every now and then, we need to come together and pray as a corporate. Pray as a group. And call on God. When they called on God, oh, yeah. Bible said yeah. they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But I wait a minute, preacher. Yeah. Weren't they filled in the second chapter? Yeah. Yes, they were. Yeah. But between the second chapter yeah. and the fourth chapter, yeah. they had been persecuted. Yeah. They had been beaten. Yeah. They had been in prison. Oh, they had gone through trials. Oh, yeah. And every now and then, yeah. we need to come back together oh, yeah. and say, God, fill us again. And began to preach. They went back out into the streets and lanes courageously. Preach in the name of Jesus. Take courage. Take courage. Can you shout yeah? Can you shout yes? Can you shout yeah? Come on and praise him, everybody. Hallelujah. See a situation just well. You know, I want to keep it peace and I just you know, uh-huh. that's just what the devil wants. Right. Some things Amen. you got to put in their place. That's right. You know. That's right. Sometimes it's time to be quiet. Amen. Sometimes you have right. to speak up. That's right. And say something. That's right. Amen. And I'm looking at what's happening in the world today. Yeah, 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 yeah. People that have a form of godliness but deny yeah. the power yeah. thereof. Yeah. And you know, too too long, too long, yeah. especially yeah. now. Yeah. We've got too many high profile yeah, people. Yeah, yes, yeah, 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 that's true. You know, yeah. talking about this is what God wants. What did I hear the other day? I heard something strange the other day. Oh, I, I heard this. In fact, I talked about it when I was in Africa. I talked about it on my Facebook line. Mm-hmm. When celebrities want to become preachers, when entertainers want to become preachers. Yeah, and God ain't called none of these folks. Yeah, <laughs> you know, they, 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 they still, you know, I can't get with y'all. I'm talking about talking to our folk on TV. Uh, yeah. You know, you get up there and make a song and you just nasty and gyrate yeah. and sing all kind of yeah. And then the cat was, I want to thank Jesus for blessing me. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jesus wasn't in that. Yeah. You're out there talking nasty. Yeah. And, and, and I, I saw this the other week. This woman, it actually here in the city of Chicago, I don't know what her name is. I know it's Kiki. I don't know the rest. Kiki Palmer? No, she's not a gospel. Yeah. No, she's a world. No, she's not. She's not. Uh-oh. Maybe that's her. Right. She started a church. She got bald headed at her. Oh, no, man. Okay. No, no, no. She started a church oh. and says, We're not going to be judgmental. Amen. Anybody can come. Amen. Y'all just, we're not going to try to condemn y'all. See, that's the thing. People now don't want nobody to be condemned. No. And folk ain't never going to get right Amen. until they feel comfortable with right. Amen. You know, Amen. it's like the eagle. The eagle realizes that she keeps them birds, the little yeah, eagles, in the yeah, nest. Yeah, yeah. They'll never fly. That's right. Now, eagle is a high soaring bird. Oh, yeah. Eagle is a, a, I don't want to say better bird, but the eagle is higher than, yeah, you know, yeah. just little robins just flapping, flapping, yeah. flapping. You ever see an eagle? Eagle mounts and then stretches. Oh, yes. Oh, it's in some eagles mm-hmm. at full strength that their wingspan can stretch six feet long. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And she's a high soaring oh, bird. Yeah. Yeah. Way up there in the clouds. Oh, yeah, she yeah. makes her nest in the cliffs yeah, of the mountain. Yeah, right. Now that's a privilege. I don't think about the bird. I'm not, but I, I don't think that's a privilege to be able to be an eagle. Right. Don't be a bird. Let me be an eagle. Right. I don't want to be no chicken. Chicken yeah. just walking food. Somebody say, Amen. Amen. That's all chicken is. Amen. It's like I never want to be a fish. A fish is just food for other fish. That's right. And all of the other fish don't get. We gonna fish in the game. <laughs> I said I never wanted to be. I had to be a bird. I didn't want to be an eagle. 
But the yeah. Bible says you should mind with wings as eagles. Well, well, the eagle that is a mixed hair uh, nest up in the cliffs of the mountain. Oh, yes. And when those eagles come, oh, yes. if she would just let them stay in the nest and she Amen. feeds them, she goes out and gets food and feeds them, yeah. they'd stay there. And they never learned the privilege Amen. of high soaring flight. Amen. And so she has to stir in the nest. Yeah. Yeah. And she puts rocks yeah. and thorns yeah. Yeah. and stuff in the nest where the nest is no longer yeah. comfortable. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. God's got to take us out of our comfort zone. Yeah. That's right. That's sometimes true. God's got to take us out of our comfortable environment. Oh, yes. That's true. And when those birds fly, sometimes you know what she'll do? She'll grab one of them oh, yeah. and fly up yeah. way up in the air and then yeah. let him go, drop it. And that eagle is flapping like your baby oh, yeah. bird, bird is flapping like you. Now she can tell if you ain't gonna make it, she can go down and get it. Yeah. She can fly down and catch it. Amen. But after a while, that eagle flapping and flapping till he starts to realize, hey, I can fly. Yeah. Now he never know that she hadn't stirred the nest. That's right. I can fly. Oh, yeah. And sometimes those eagles are going, they'll never come back to the oh, nest. They're going for they will go out yes. because they learned the privilege of flying. That's right. That's but what did the eagle have to do? Stir the nest. That's right. And sometimes God has got to stir our mind. Oh, yes, yes, too comfortable. Yes, too comfortable. Yes, You're never going to get to where I want you to go. And you know, the Lord, listen to my heart, know what he is going to say that some people live their entire lives and die and never Amen. come to their potential. Amen. Never come to their full yeah. potential. Yeah. You know why? Because they got in a comfort Amen. zone and didn't want to leave. Yes. They got in the nest. Yes. And you know what? When you never come to your potential, Amen. Amen. You'll never know what you could have experienced. That's, that's right. I remember when you were in the pre- I remember the first time I learned to swim. Yeah, yeah. You know, I swim pretty good now. Right. Typical stereotype black folk can't swim. Amen. I can't yeah. swim. <laughs> <Amen. laughs> you know, but you know what? What made the difference? I almost drowned. I probably told you all that when I was eight years old, I almost drowned. But I did not take that story right there. Um, but why, when did I learn to swim? When I got out to the deep end, yes. Yes. when my feet could no longer touch the bottom. Amen. As long as my feet could touch the bottom, I wouldn't swim. I, I wouldn't even get horizontal. See, you got to get horizontal to swim. You know, I, I, I wouldn't be do that because as long as my feet were on the ground, I was safe. But when I finally moved over, took me over. And so they told me stroke and kick. Right. I started swimming. All right. And you know what? I felt like I was flying. Really, the first time I swam, I felt like I was flying. I said, man, yeah. look at this. Look. I was, and I was, look, look, look. And I was showing for that. And I could swim across the pool and across right. the, down the middle of the pool. And, and eventually I got enough courage to go off the diving board. And, right. and, and eventually, I, I don't know, when I was in high school, I was on the diving team. All right. And I learned to do all that stuff. I can't do that no more. I used to do a double somersault, reverse one and a half, back one and a half, inward one and a half. I used to do all that stuff in high school. See, but I had to get out of the shallow end. And you know, some folk are just shallow. Some folk will remain shallow because you don't get out in the deep end. Some folk will never have real victory. Your testimony will stay the same. 20 years. Thank the Lord for waking me this morning. Thank the Lord for watching me all night. I found myself being saved, saying, Five, feel the Holy Ghost with the tongue. Y'all pray my sleep the Lord. Boom. Yeah. That's all it is. That's all you say. Because you have no other victory. You have no other testimony. Because you're still on the shallow end. All right. My God. You know, and something we stumble over that we should have gotten victory over a long time ago. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm closing. But the reason why David wanted to fight Goliath in the first place was because victory feels good. Yeah, all right. Yeah. When you win, you want to keep going. Yes. When you've been winning, that's why the Bulls, all in years, I'm going to reference to the Bulls, all those years they kept winning championships. And you know, after a while, you keep winning. After a while, people want to see somebody else, and they start booing you. That's yeah, true. They start, yeah. they ain't going to win again. But see, the reason why was because they liked the way winning felt. Yeah, that's right. And uh, 
you know, and I, I liked it too. You know, yeah. I was there. Yeah. I was an NBA champion chaplain. You see, right. right. I, felt about it. I liked winning. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it just get fun. After a while, you just, yeah. oh my, you just win. You, you, you're the best. And David, the reason why I believe he wanted to fight for life was because he knew how victory felt. Oh, yes. He knew what it was like to be an overcomer. Yes. He knew what it was like to be a winner. Yes. And the very fact that I've been winning, I want to keep on winning. Yes. And you know what happens to winners? They look for bigger challenges. Yes, right. They do. And then we go back to the NBA. Everybody that the Western Conference sent to play the Bulls, the Bulls yeah. moved them off. Amen. The Lakers, they beat them. Yeah. Portland, they beat them. Yeah. Uh, who was the third? Uh, Seattle, they beat them. Amen. Utah came twice. They got whooped both times. The Bulls yeah. beat all of them. Amen. Everybody they sent, Phoenix, yeah. Phoenix, yeah. they whooped them. Yeah. Every team that the, that the Western Conference sent, yeah. the Bulls whooped them. Yeah. Then went to France and played in the tournament there and whooped everybody there. Amen. That was a great team. Oh, yeah. 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 In this day and time of challenge, we are courageous, strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We bless you for the word today. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless. God bless.